thank you very much, Philippa. So you can see my screen and with the slides and not anything else. <laughs> and you can hear me all right. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Juliet and I'm an analyst at Maiden. I've been working here for about eight years, but working with health data, dare I say it, nearly 30 years. Um, my main role here at Maiden is to create workbooks for our clients, for you. And the majority of these workbooks are part of the IAPTIS suite of dashboards. In this session, we're going to be looking at how we get to the dashboards, what data is included in the dashboards and how it gets there, what we've released over the last six months and what's coming up in the future and how you can influence it. Um, throughout the presentation, you'll see some slides, etc. Can I just point out that the data that I'm presenting is test data. From our earlier poll today, uh, we can see that there is a mix of people joining us. Um, I think I noticed that about 10% have never used dashboards before, uh, but a number of you have. So apologize, uh, apologies if you're all familiar with this side of things, but just to make sure, I'm gonna take a minute to show you where to find your dashboards in IAPTIS. So if uh, from IAPTIS, if you navigate to the reports button, you'll see two tabs, Hypercube and dashboards, and click on the dashboards tab to see a full list of those available to, to your IAPTIS instance. Click on the green bar and go through to the selected workbook. If you don't see the dashboards tab, um, contact your super user and request permission. Um, the, the data in your dashboards is not a direct link from your um, IAPTIS tables. And I'd like to explain how um, the process that we go through to provide your dashboard data. Our flow starts with you inputting data into the IAPTIS front end. The information you input is stored in the IAPTIS backend tables. And there are quite a few of these, as you can imagine, and we're not particularly interested in all of them or all the data from in within any one table. Um, it's also data that you are querying front end. So when you run hypercube reports or you navigate from one screen to another. And if we were to run any big dashboard reports and calculations on the data, it would slow everything down for, for you. So we've created various ETL processes, ETL meaning extract, transform and load. And this is the process by which data is extracted from your IAPTIS data. And we also bring in data from other sources if needed and do calculations, which we can do in advance. These processes we run overnight um, when you're not on your um, using your IAPTIS system and they're ready for you to use in the following morning. As a result, your data will only be up to date as at the last refresh date or the last run date, which you'll see displayed on your dashboards. And any changes you make in IAPTIS during the day will not be reflected in the dashboards until the ETL is rerun the following evening. The resulting tables provide the data for the dashboards, and uh, these are created using a piece of visualization software made by Tableau. And these data tables are completely separate from your IAPTIS data tables, so it doesn't affect your IAPTIS performance at all. I've explained how we get data for the dashboards, but what's the process for developing the dashboards themselves? The starting point is the idea or suggestion from clients or account managers, NHS Digital or England Reports, IAPTIS Developments, etc. David, our team's product owner, who you'll hear from later this afternoon, he then gets any further information required from interested parties and creates a scoping document. This typically includes things like what questions we're trying to answer, are there any national targets, what filters are required to make it valuable, what dimensions would I want to split the data by, does anything need adding to the ETL job or is a new ETL job required, etc. 
Once all the necessary information has been gathered, he'll create mock-ups of how the dashboards within the workbook should look, which he disseminates to everyone for comment. It's likely that it will require some additional fields to be extracted from the IAPTIS tables, so new ETL jobs are created or existing ones updated. Um, this is the reason why um, with these new developments, it will result in us letting you know of schema changes. The, um, the work for creating the mockups in Tableau is then started, followed by a demonstration to account managers and IAPTIS product feature owners. Any adjustments to the workbooks are then made. If the idea or suggestion came from a client, the beta might be released uh, to them to, for review. And we've recently included this stage in our process and one of our workbooks to be released shortly, which is really related to a new IAPTIS feature, has just been uploaded to a client site so they can use it, give us feedback before deploying to other clients. If you'd like to be involved in this stage in the future, please let us know. Following this, um, we'll then look at implementing any changes to the workbook as required and then we start working on the video demo video script and if all changes have been made to the workbook we'll actually record the video the final stage is to communicate uh, the news of a new or revised workbook or dashboard to our clients and then to deploy the workbook we try to give about a week's notice, especially when there are schema changes, which may affect your own analysis work. But there are exceptions, um, things like uh, bug fixes or small changes which don't affect the schema. Uh, this slide is just for your information, really. Uh, these are the top five most visited workbooks in descending order. So what have we been doing over the last six months? Um, most of the changes to existing dashboards or new workbooks come from ideas from you, um, either through the account managers as support logs or from innovation posts. In May, we developed a revised version of the wait times workbook. This workbook looks at wait times for referrals. This could either be how long they are waiting for a first treatment appointment, or if they've not yet had one, those who have had their first treatment appointment and how long they waited. The initial version was based upon guidance from NHS England called IAPT Waiting Times Guidance and FAQs, uh, which looks at the time to first treatment appointment for ended referrals. We then added a dashboard looking at open referrals still waiting for a first treatment appointment and how long each had been waiting. Here we can see that there are two targets set to 42 days and 126 days as default. Uh, this corresponds to the waiting time metrics NHS Digital use, but we appreciate that you have your own targets or CCGs may have set your alternatives. So as with all of our dashboards, we try to be as flexible as possible. So in this case, you can change the targets to suit your own individual needs. Again, trying to be as helpful as we can, you can click through from any of the segments on the bars to identify the patients who are included in those bars. A brand new SMS workbook was deployed in July, which is the start of our revamping of the older style workbooks. This workbook is part of our suite of looking at particular IAPTIS features, whereas our workbooks had been about presenting the information graphically in lots of different ways. The new workbooks try not only to show the volume of activity, but also what impact a particular IAPTIS feature has on your service. In this particular workbook, um, we're looking at SMS, for example, reminders, cancellations, ad hoc messages, etc sent by the service. For example, here we can see a chart showing SMS sent as one message, is one message and those sent as mus multiple messages. It's not the case for this service, but sometimes we see quite a large proportion of messages just going over into the two message band, and this often is associated, associated with a particular message type. Um, these dashboards can help you to identify those messages so that you can take action to reduce their length where possible. 
You may have noticed that the default start and end dates for workbooks were set uh, during their development and uh, they don't change once they've been deployed. So if a workbook hasn't been updated for a while, these dates can get very old. Some of the older ones, you know, have dates from like two, the 1st of April 2017 on them. Um, these um, following a Tableau server upgrade, we can now ensure that the start and end dates keep up to date. This dash, um, just move on. Um, this dashboard looks at whether sending SMS can be associated with increased attendance or reduced DNA rates. You can look at the majority of these dashboards as either percentages or numbers by changing the parameter at the top of the next slide. I don't know, you can probably see this P Madison waiting to enter the room. I'm not sure whether I can just get rid of that. There we go. Um, yeah, so you can change uh, the number or percentage at the top here to, to alter the view. Let's move on. The final dashboard gives an overview of the status of your SMS, how the uptake for receiving SMS is changing over time, and the demographics of those who consent and do not consent to receive messages. We also started to take advantage of another feature included in the upgrade, Tableau upgrade, and this enables us to include help guides with overlays in our workbooks so that clients have easier access to information on what the various elements of the dashboards mean or show. C uh, waiting times for CYP was released in September, and this was the first dedicated CYP workbook. This particular workbook is looking at the weeks waiting for a first and second contact, or the number of weeks they waited for a first and second contact. The CYP services use the Mental Health Services dataset, MHSDS, and therefore they collect slightly different data to the IAP data, data set, although V2.0 has brought this much closer together. Um, they also have different calculations and metrics. And as a company, we have more and more CYP services joining us, and it's important that we improve our reporting for these services. In the MHSDS metrics, there are calculations for wait times to a first contact for ended referrals. This looks very similar to the IAPT, uh, adult IAPT wait times, but the calculations specify that the contacts must be a certain consultation medium type, as well as attended to the first appointment, rather than for adults, it's specific treatment type and attended for the first assessment or treatment calculations um, for adults. Some clients requested that they would like to look at not only wait times for those referrals that have already ended, but also wait times for referrals still open. So we incorporated a parameter for users to select their preferred option. A number of our customers requested that we look at time to second appointment. As there's no national definition for this, we have allowed users to select this as being time to second appointment from either the referral date or from the previous appointment so to be as flex flexible as possible. The dashboard does use the, um, the period start uh, to filter out referrals. If the start date is after the earliest referral date for an open referral, a warning triangle will appear. Hovering over the triangle will provide a message to identify the earliest referral date for an open referral. 24th of December 1008 in this case, most likely a data quality issue. Users also requested that we look at how long patients have waited for um, or have been waiting for a first or second contact where the referral is still open and this was incorporated into the new workbook. As with most other dashboards, you can split the bars into segments based on different dimensions in the data. And you can see we've added dimensions specific to CYP referrals to our list. In September, we released um, an update to the appointment workbook. This workbook looks at activity for your service, which is based at appointment level. 
there are a number of dashboards that are looking at timelines, appointments by various dimensions, ratios, heat maps. And this recent release was again as a result of a customer request, and it required a revamp of the heat map dashboards. We introduced a toggle button, another new feature following the upgrade uh, to Tableau, and we can switch between the heat map view and the bar chart view. And the other change was to add a second. Um, um, the other change was to the second heat map dashboard, which was as a direct result of customer support log. Again, we added the toggle button, but we also added a chart to see how many appointments were booked at specific times of the day. The support log suggested, uh, well, it said, we know how to find on the heat map which days are mostly taken up with slots, but we want to know if the time of day can also be found. This addition to the dashboard goes towards answering this question, but we want to go further and, and so we'll be looking at updating our ETL for the capacity planning workbook, which I'll discuss later. Another support log required an alteration to the appointment workbook. And we're pleased to implement this change as again, it was about enhancing our offering to CYP services. And our workbook at this time didn't include any CYP type fields. So we included this as well as a number of other MHSDS fields in an appointment CYP section of the dimension drop down, as you can see here. The Data Quality V2 workbook was deployed in October. As a company, we understood the huge effort that would be required from us and yourselves to get ready from IAPT V2, major change to the adult IAPT dataset. As part of a range of things developed and put in place to help you, we developed this new workbook to help with your list management. At a glance, you can see which categories require attention, in this case, referral source. And if you click on that category, you can see which items need mapping, identified easily by the red triangle. You can filter the list so that you're only looking at items which need your attention. And even though it's not requested by our clients, it was great to know that it was of help and appreciated. The final workbook I'd like to show you is the online appointments booking workbook deployed as a beta in October. This workbook has been developed in preparation for the release of a new online appointment booking feature in IAPTIS. The purpose of this workbook is to show how many links have been sent to patients to book their appointments online, how many of those links were accessed and resulted in bookings, what booking days and times patients chose and whether there is a difference in attendance and wait times for those booked online and those booked using other means. This dashboard looks at the links sent to patients, how many were accessed and how many resulted in booking for a period of time chosen. You can look at this information in timeline and you can see what proportion of the total appointments are booked online. Some of our newer workbooks include an information button in the top right corner, whereas before this included information which is now in the help guide, now the information button contains information on calculations or excluded data, etc., which might be useful to, for you to help understand how we've arrived at certain figures. The following dashboard shows a heat map or a bar chart um, which, um, using the toggle button, which shows the popularity of particular hours or days of the week for appointments booked using the online booking system. The bottom chart shows the number of days between two dates chosen by the user, in this case between the link sent and the appointment date. If the number of hours is chosen, a warning triangle appears and um, should the display hours be set to a lower number than in the data. Hovering over the warning triangle shows a message identifying the maximum hours, number of hours in your data. The final dashboard shows the attendance for those appointments booked online and those booked by another method. The timeline on the right can show either those attended, cancelled by the patient or DNA by choosing from the dimension drop-down box. 
The bottom charts compare the average wait times in days for those booked online or other booking method. If you'd like any help on new IAPT, any further information on the new IAPTIS feature, please get in touch with your account manager and they'd be happy to help. Apart from general workbook releases and schema changes to the backend ta data tables, our team has also been working on bespoke workbooks for clients. These have included workbooks to help with monthly reporting to CCGs, providing reports to identify activity for billing, audit reports such as which Hypercube reports have been run by which all users and with which filters selected, a number of research um, extracts for researchers, providing a download workbook for a client who is using IAPTIS to store diabetes activity. One of our clients is um, one of our clients required a subset of data to feed the usual IAPTIS workbooks and be accessible to a specific number of users from a particular location within their service. And um, some of our clients oversee a number of IAPTIS instances and they required these to be merged into one database so that they could see the activity for all instances in one place. If we can help you streamline any processes or make life a little easier for you, please get in touch with us and we'll discuss the options with you. The workbook I showcased earlier, uh, Wait Times for CYP, as well as being the first dedicated workbook for CYP services, was also the first workbook to have a demo video created for it. We're trying to create one for each new release and upload it to our YouTube channel, and new workbooks also have the video embedded in them. We've covered things that have been released over the last six months, so what are we hoping to do over the next six months? Our main efforts over the next few months are going to be updating our workbooks to include the new IAPT v 2.0 definitions and calculations. Uh, we're talking to NHS Digital uh, to receive documentation as soon as it's released to make sure that we can action this as soon as possible. We're about to start on an integrated video workbook for many of you, this has been a major change to the way your service runs. We analyse activity for all services so we can estimate demand and ensure we have sufficient hardware in place to manage all these online videos. But we haven't yet created a workbook specifically for individual IAPT services. I mentioned earlier that we're soon to look at revising the capacity planning ETL and we'll be updating the workbook as a result of that. We'd like to report on more of the features now included in IAPTIS diary and to relook at the way slot availability links to appointments booked. This is a big deal for our clients and we have a number of requests to look at this, particularly how far in advance slots are being made available for bookings. Our web forms workbook also needs a revision to include web forms sent outside a session. Currently it only includes web forms attached to a particular session. David will talk this afternoon about uh, some other exciting developments that take our analytics offering in a new direction over the coming months. So hopefully you've gathered from this presentation so far that a number of workbook and dashboard revisions and updates are as a result of client requests and ideas. Our team really um, appreciates your feedback. Our, Maiden, our data services team at Maiden are here primarily to help you get more from your data that you painstakingly input into IAPTIS day in, day out. I've mentioned that a number of clients have got in touch via support logs, and there's also, an IAPTIS, uh, there's also IAPTIS Innovations, where you can register your ideas or suggestions and vote for existing entries so we know which ones are the most important to you. Links for both of these can be found on the IAPTIS front end, or for innovations, you can also visit maiden.uservoice.com. Finally, do please come and talk to us. We're very keen to build a relationship with you and really value the contact we have with our clients on reporting and analysis. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening. And we're running to time, so I think we can take any questions.